Welcome to the Send More Offers Real Estate Show with Brandon Barnes, showing you how to do wholesaling deals consistently without having to go on seller appointments. Learn the key tips and strategies that Brandon's students use to find deeply discounted properties that are pennies on the dollar, all while avoiding wear and tear on their vehicle, body, and freedom. Whether you're looking for your first deal or your next deal, it's time to send more offers with your host, Brandon Barnes. Welcome to the show, Brian. How's everything going? What's up, man? It's going good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm super excited for this conversation because, you know, we were just talking kind of in the pre-show in the green room about everything that you guys have going with MotivatedLeads.com. And it's super exciting to speak to somebody of your caliber, right, that has that background knowledge and the data behind getting good quality leads especially in this market where leads and good quality leads are definitely the name of the game. What's been going on? So how did this all come about? I know you're an investor yourself. Like, How did this motivated leads come together? Yeah, sure. So I'll give you the short story. Back in like 2004, I got involved with digital marketing and on the SEO side. So I was on a platform. It's called Odesk, which is now Upwork. Yep. I was just like freelancing on there, charging 20 bucks an hour, helping people out, doing some consulting. And then that grew into a business. So I, it, it grew into an agency called Think Big Marketing, where I was dealing with uh, large like national and international companies charging like $150, $250 an hour to do their marketing. Nice. I did that for a long time. And then I bought a prop, went to a Ron Legrand seminar back in like 98, got into real estate, but I failed miserably. And uh, probably about 10 years ago now, nine, 10 years ago, I, got, I actually got my first deal. I found it on Craigslist. And I saw the wholesale fee and the deal made sense with the wholesale fee. I'm not dogging the fee or anything, but I'm like 15 grand. Let me slap up a website and see if I can get deals, you know? So I put up a website and we crushed it. I'm like, geez, man, because the local marketing is a lot easier than like national marketing. Right. So we started offering it to investors to see how it went. And we just crushed it ever since. We started Motivated Leads probably about two and a half years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we do now. Just generate leads for real estate investors. And I just buy properties and hold them. Wow. So your background in digital marketing and everything that you were doing with Odesk, formerly known, right? Upwork now. And like, how did you get into that? Was that, you know, marketing? Did you go to school for that? Uh, did you just naturally enjoy it and, and really do it in your free time? Yeah. You know what? I got into it. My buddy, I have a buddy here. His name's Phil Laboon. He's in Pittsburgh and he's always ahead of curves. So back in like 2000, he got involved with SEO. And I was just watching. I'm like, I don't even know what you got the going on. But this infancy stages of the internet, he was already in SEO. He was. Yeah, he was in wow. SEO. He's going door to door selling $500 packages. Like, he's a beast now, like building multi million dollar businesses and everything. But back then, I so I got introduced through him. I'm like, hey, what do you got going on? And then I uh, just started tinkering around. I was on a uh, forum. I used to go on Warrior Forum. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that. It was like an old school forum, digital marketing tips. I'm just self-taught. It's like get punched in the face a whole bunch and keep getting back up. And yeah, I just kept figuring it out and liked it. And now I'm pretty good at it, you know? Love it. And I love SEO. And guys, just to be clear, you know, search engine optimization, it's the long game, you know, making sure that your website, it ranks high. And when people are naturally searching, you know, sell my house fast, you pop up without any paid traffic. And then there's the other side of that of, of paid ads. And I think that right now, this is one of the best way to get really good leads because, you know, as of late, so many people have flooded the market with cold calling and mail. You can get it coming from all over the country or even the world coming into your city. So actually talking to people that are ready to sell now that actually sought you out ends up being some of the best leads. So I really love, you know, that strategy of going after deals and marketing in this manner. What are you seeing right now from your end as far as like the amount of people that are looking to sell their property and using the internet to do so? So there's always people looking to sell, right? Just because life happens, like bad things pop up. And on the marketing side too, I like digital just because that's where I found the best. Like any marketing is going to work. If you do it consistently. So people newer, drive for dollars, things like that. Like don't go spend a bunch when you're see you're trading sweater money, right? But what I'm seeing now, end of last year, things got really tough. 2022. Like sellers wanted too much money. They thought their houses were worth too much. They weren't because the market was dropping already. But since February this year, I've been seeing a lot of action. 
And I think people are even seeing it when they're listed on the MLS too. You're getting a lot of action, multiple offers. So the market should have corrected already and it hasn't. And I don't know when it's going to, but right now it's pretty decent. I am seeing a lot of, not a lot, but I'm seeing leads coming through now for pre-foreclosure again, which we haven't seen for a couple of years. Wow. Wow. That's great. And funny enough, I interviewed a lender who really, he pinpointed the same exact month. The guys over at uh, Hard Money Bankers, they pinpointed February of this year as the shift in the market starting to get better. So, you know, you hear it a few different times and it, so it must be true. And so that's good. And that means that, you know, we should really be out here doing everything that we can to generate off-market leads. And digital is a great way just so people kind of get a sense of what your team does and how it operates. Can you kind of give us some background on what are the tools and the means that you do online to generate these leads? Yeah, sure. So we generate leads. I use Google Pay Per Click, Facebook, and SEO. So what we have is we have Google Pay Per Click that's paying to be at the top of the search engine and you're paying per click and it's expensive in this space. Like you might spend 20, 30, 50 bucks for one click. Then we do Facebook ads. That's marketing to people through ads like visuals. You're paying per impression. So you might pay Facebook 20 bucks to show your ad to a thousand people. And you need to just make sure you're targeting the right audience there because you're competing against shoe stores, bakeries, whatever's trying to market to that audience. Then SEO, like you were saying before, is just ranking in a free section of Google. So there's, they all work. They work really well together. For example, if you have like Google pay per click traffic, go to your website, you spent 30 bucks to get them there. The person doesn't fill out a form, you cookie them and like through a Facebook pixel, and then you can retarget them, keep your ads in front of those people, and then bring them back in. So they kind of like work back and forth. Yeah. I like that strategy of them all working together, but I've had some experience. I think one of the first digital ad agencies that I worked with was 100% Facebook. And we ended up with a lot of tire kickers. Would you say that some of these out of the three, one works better than the rest. I know that they all work well together combined, but between PBC, SEL, and Facebook, if, some, if you had to pick one, what would you say is the most effective? Depends on budget. Now, here's something about Facebook. So let me ask you, like when you were running Facebook ads, were you sending them to a website or were you using uh, Facebook lead forms? Do you know? I want to say it was our own lead capture form. And it was right from our CRM, I believe. Okay. So here's what I see on Facebook especially for anybody trying to run Facebook ads themselves too. Facebook can work really well and Facebook can suck. Uh, What I mean by that is when you're running Facebook ads, there's all these different objectives that you can choose. You can choose to run ads for engagement. You can choose to run them for uh, traffic. You can use to run them for leads. Facebook is, their algorithm is so smart. They know who's going to click the like button and do nothing else or click your link and then do nothing else once they get to the page. So Number one, when you're setting things up, I recommend setting things up with a, with a conversion-based ad. But the reason I'm talking about that is even on the lead side, there's different ways. You can do a Facebook lead form. Then both ads, look, all the ads look the same. So a lead form is someone sees your ad, so sell your house fast. They click it. It opens a form inside Facebook, pre-populates your info from Facebook, and that's a lead. Those are going to be like super low quality, basically garbage, right? Yeah. If you take someone that clicks that same looking ad, we send them to a website. The, I, I kind of use a website to disqualify people. So it's kind of like the gatekeeper. So we like a website might say, sell your house fast. We're investors. We're not paying top dollar. But if you're looking for a convenient offer, fill out the form. And then we have them give us their name, phone number, email address. After they do that, we ask them more questions. It's like, why do you want to sell? How fast do you want to sell? How much work does your property need? And if you do that and push them through like a funnel in a, a couple multi-step form, usually generates decent quality leads there. But you're right. If you do it the other way, though, it's like you might close one out of 100. It's like they might as well telemarket. Right. Right. Makes sense. And so, you know, all of these items, I'm assuming, have been kind of like a trial and error over the time. And getting the impressions, getting the leads, that's just kind of half the battle. Do you see some variation in the operators and what they do after the lead comes in. Like, you know, do you, have you gotten feedback from some of the folks that purchase these leads? Like, is it, you know, a slam dunk? Is it easy? Do some people succeed and others don't? Yeah, that's a good question. First, to answer your other question, I didn't even answer your question. I went on a tangent. I choose Facebook first. Really? 
Facebook, then Google pay per click, then SEO. Because wow. you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck if you do it right. But expect to spend, um, if you're running your own Facebook ads, 150 to 200 bucks per lead on Facebook mm-hmm. versus lead forms might be 30 bucks. So what about the others? Why don't we just go on and compare the compare notes here? Yeah, PPC, how much per lead? SEO, how much per lead? Okay, so it depends on what city. We'll just talk about like averages across the US. Like Facebook, I'd say 150 to 200. Uh, Google pay per click, 250 to say 350 a lead. SEO, SEO is like a long play. You can't really, wanna- I don't know how to tell what the actual cost per lead is there because it's like, SEO is going to give you one of the highest quality leads but also, if you do SEO, don't expect a lead for six months. Like, expect right. But even the folks that use SEO, it's like somebody working on their website over time consistently. The budget for that ends up being like you use, you know, a good SEO. Somebody working specifically on a website is that going to run you what maybe three hundred dollars per month or so? I mean, yeah, like so, yeah, someone good on SEO is going to be a couple grand a month. Mm. But you can do SEO on your on your own too. Like SEO, all SEO is, here's SEO in a nutshell. Google's sole purpose is to generate, to give people answers. So they're trying to find the most relevant website out there, right? When For any questions. Some house fast, what's the most relevant one that Google sees? Boom, they put it at the top. So a lot of it comes down to content, creating value for people on your website, things like that. A lot of people can do that for free. And then it has link building, which is building links to your website. They're kind of like boats. So you can you can build links yourself. There's a website called Hera, like help a reporter out. You can do all kinds of different ways to get the links. But most agencies, they're gonna be they're usually gonna be kind of expensive if they're doing the link building. You can get SEO done for really cheap too, but you have to watch on the links like to make sure you're not doing spammy stuff because you can also disappear from the search engine. Mm. Yeah, and, and so doing this yourself, like what would that even look like? I know, you know, if, it, if it's that expensive for somebody to do it very well. For somebody actually doing this themselves, SEO, I mean, like how involved are we talking? Yes. Yeah, so here's what you're looking at when you're doing SEO, right? Like what we do for clients. So number one, you have to have all unique content on your website. So I know a lot of people, especially in this space, get websites that are like cookie cutter websites that are really easy to put up. Like Carrot's a really good website that I use. Right. Uh, the, and Carrot converts really well, but all their content is duplicate content. So first thing is you need to go through and rewrite all the content. And then you have to even take a step before you do that. And you have to do keyword research. What that is, you need to search. You can use tools like SEMrush, SEMrush.com or AREFs and type in words like sell my house fast and see how many people search that a month. Because and then what your primary goal is to find is which phrases are people searching and then try to rank for those. So you have to do the keyword research, then write the content, get the right keywords in the right spaces. So you're going to have a lot of research involved with that, like even understanding what's a title tag, what's a meta description, where do the keywords go? But it's possible for people to do, especially if you're just starting out, you can do this stuff on your own. Seasoned guys normally don't want to mess around with that stuff because it's a lot of trial and error and it takes like six months or longer to see results. So you don't know if what you're doing is right or not until like six months later to see if you're getting rankings. Yeah. And then with that, like keyword research and whatnot, is that something that you would have to continue to do month after month? Like what's ranking now versus what it was and then alter your website to be better? Yeah, kind of. So you do the keyword research. Like once you optimize a page on your website, it's usually done. But to rank and like you want to continually be writing blogs or creating content. So every type of piece, if you want to write something about how to avoid foreclosure, you're going to have to go research the keywords and be like, it might be like how to avoid foreclosure or how to stop foreclosure or what, like, here's an example, like car attorney, car, oh, what is it? Like car accident attorney versus car accident lawyer might be 5,000, 5,000 searches different just from attorney and lawyer. Uh, so say even in this space, like sell my house, sell my property, which, which one do people searching? Sell my home. You have to research. Okay. What are people typing into Google? Cause if people are typing in sell my home, and you're trying to rank for sell my house or vice versa. You know what I mean? There you go. Got it. Got it. Yeah, good stuff. And so all of this is, is, of course, if, you know, you were trying to do this on your own. Now, if you're using a provider, right, that is bringing you some of these digitally, I'm going to go back to my other question earlier. Like, what does one have to do on the back end? Have you seen data around what makes some operators better 
executors of these leads versus other? How quickly is it live answer? Like all of that stuff. 100%. So anything online is super time sensitive, right? Right. So you get a lead form. Someone fills out a form on your website. They're hot and they're raising their hand, expecting a phone call. So when you get a text message or email or some sort of notification saying you got a lead, you got to drop what you're doing and call them like within two minutes. Because if we're in a, say we're, there's a couple people in Pittsburgh and most people will search sell my house fast in Google. There's three results at the top. A lot of these sellers will fill out all three of those. Right. First one that gets to that seller that seems respectable, not going to rip them off and that they like, they're usually going to sign a contract if they're really motivated. Then they quit picking up the phone. So the other right. two people think, ah, oh, it's just a crappy lead. It's not. You were too slow. Someone else beat you to it. And so that's one of the top things I see. Top operators I see, because I work with some of the I work with some of the biggest people in the US, speed, processes after, and follow up. A lot of guys will call a lead two times and then they mark it dead. It takes on an average eight to thirteen connects to get to a lead and actually get to qualified lead. So you have to follow up. I recommend using drip sequences for text message and email and calling up. Like call a couple times during the first day and just keep following up with these people. You don't want to be naggy, especially with drip messages too. It's not, you don't want to have the stupid text messages like, hey, just following up, seeing if you wanted to sell your, like, sell your house, things like that. If you can try to personalize them. And if you have a CRM too, if you can section them to different, like different stage or different stages on what the people are looking for, like, you can text people that are in pre foreclosure different messages that people are divorced or things like that, or just inherited a home. If you can tailor your messages to them, that's a way to stand out. It's like if someone being divorced, they have totally different problems than a hoarder does, that their house needs too much work to list on a property. So I see those. One last tip I'll give you too. This is a really big one. Whenever a lead comes in, have an automatic text message sent out to that seller. Thanks for filling out a form on our website. Here's a link to book an appointment for us to come give you an offer and give them that calendar link or whatever kind of link you want. It gauges their motivation. Like who's going to fill out a form for a stranger to come to their house without talking to you? And also at three in the morning when that lead comes in, say the Google example again, they filled out your website. Then if they say they filled out my website and then they fill out yours and they get a text message right after they fill out your website saying book an appointment. That stops them, pulls them off of Google. Now they're in the calendar and the likelihood of them going out and filling out other forms is lower. Love it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Yes. Very, very good stuff. And I think that that's going to help out a lot of people. And like I said, just generally give folks a sense of, you know, what digital marketing is all about, what's working. You know, we got to talk about the market as well. I want to ask you just where do you see you know, uh, marketing for off-market leads going, like the, the overall landscape. And I'm talking not just digitally versus some of the other channels. So what's going on right now? What do you see into the future? So I see it, digital is a really good way to have people call you. SMS is one of the cheapest ways I hear from everybody that they're getting deals. Problem with SMS is like there's legal problems, like texting people on a do not call list, things like that. That's by far the cheapest other than driving for dollars that I see. Driving for dollars is still good for if someone's just starting out. People like cold calling. Cold calling may go away. I think SMS will be gone. I think that's going to be gone soon. Like soon, like five years maybe. I think they're going to crack down on that. SMS is already kind of like that. That and Ringless voicemail is, you know, already. Yeah, Ringless voicemail, another one. But people do it. I'd say if you're going to do SMS, hire a company to do it that you have an arm's length away. You know what I mean? Things like that. Just because you text someone, you might get a $5,000 fine or whatever. It depends on if you're in Florida, I think they penalize you pretty bad. Yeah. I think, uh, what, what do you got? You got mailers? You mentioned, mailers you, mentioned cold, you mentioned cold calling and then you're about to talk about mail. But what, what were you going to say relative to cold calling? Cold calling is decent too. You just have to make sure you have a really good list and yes. you're not calling people that are on the do not call list. I was just looking at uh, chat GPT, right? You know about chat GPT? Yeah. I love it. Someone was just telling me chat GPT is now programmed that I shouldn't even tell people about this because this is good. <laughs> um, that, that you can have the lawsuit papers written up for someone that called you. If you're not on a do not call list right from chat, chat GPT, it will like write up the whole thing for and avoid the lawyer. Right. It's like, yeah. which is horrible for this industry. Right. Right. You know, I so, agree. I agree. And that is worrisome. 
But you touched on something in regards to the data. Um, and I've been talking about that for a while. I typically would always pull from the county everything that I could. Um, but even that is kind of tough sometimes. Do you have to worry about data issues because you're a digital marketer first? So on our side, we're limited due to like discrimination, things like that. So we can't even target. Like if you're running ads in Facebook, you have to select that you're in the housing category. It takes away a lot of our targeting. We can't target by sex. We can't target by zip codes. We can't target by interest, things like that. So it doesn't affect us much. In the other spaces though, like list stacking, things like that. What that is, it's like, if you can get a good list, which is different than what I was talking about in telemarketing, but list stacking, if you can get a good list of people that are stacked, like this person is divorced, going through foreclosure, and they have um, tax liens. Like those are hot lists, right? Versus just going after like owner occupied or non owner occupied. They've owned it for 20 years. Yeah. So uh, things like that, those lists are expensive though, too. Like you, you yeah. pay definitely the county lists, I think are the best, like you're talking about though, because you can get it in real time versus buying from a, a data aggregator that's like a month behind. Right. Do you have any feedback on what are the, some of the best stack criteria, like the best things to stack together? Or is it all kind of trial and error? Well, I know pre-foreclosure, pre-foreclosure, they say is the hottest. I don't cold call myself, so I don't know. But they said pre-foreclosure, you're going to have the highest hit rate. If you're looking for things like that, stack on top of the pre-foreclosure side. Got it. So you could just do a very the different other options plus pre-foreclosure and try it out. Yeah, it's going to depend on your market. Like some markets, you might just have to go pre-foreclosure if the population is not there. But if say you get a list of pre-foreclosure and it's like 100,000. Then it's like, okay, let me add something else on there. Okay, maybe if I put divorce on it, it drops to 40,000. Can I afford to send mailers to 40? No. Okay, let's stick something else on there and get it to your budget. But some markets, you might do pre foreclosure. If you're in a rural area, there might only be like 1,000 people. Yeah. You know, big facts. Good stuff, man. This, I could talk about this stuff all day. I really appreciate it. And I know, you know, you've done deals yourself. What's one of the craziest deals that you've done through your digital marketing efforts? Yeah, so I got a uh, I got a deal. It came in, um, I think it was Dece- November or December of this year. It came through our Carrot website, right? Yeah. And this dude comes through and it talk about speed. So I actually did a video on this, uh, like, is it, like a case study. This guy came through my website. I was on the phone with him like two minutes later. I was to his house in 20 minutes. Oh, wow. Right? So go meet this guy. <laughs> It was cheap, dude. The house, the house was hammered. And uh, he wanted like 60 grand or something. So I'm like, okay, hey, let's do it. And uh, this this is actually a good testimony on, on follow-up too. He just blew me off. He's like, nah, nah, I'm not ready yet. He hit me up like three months later. He's like, you know what? I went out and fixed the foundation in the concrete, uh, but I'm ready to sell now. And I want 70 grand. So he's like, yeah, just because I did it. I'm like, dude, it would cost me more than 10 grand to fix that stuff. But three, four months after, is because I was staying in front of him. He came back to it. I got a house for like seventy thousand dollars. We went in, put like thirty into it. And his situation was this is important too when dealing with sellers. Everyone's always focused. A lot of newer guys are focused on the money. You want to find out what their problem is. So this guy's situation was his house was beat up, but that wasn't why he was selling. He wanted to have a convenient sale because he had already had a new house under contract, and he needed to he needed to coordinate closing dates. So and he and he needed the money for the new deal. So what I did with him, I purchased the property cash. We closed. I let him stay there for three weeks and rented it to him. He had the money to close. The bank could see where the money was coming from, and it worked out for him on that side. So right. it's like he didn't really. He could have sold it on the MLS too for kind of the same money, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't have that first. I was going to rent it to him and right all that kind right. of stuff. How much did you end up netting on that on the back end? You know what? I never sold a property in my life. I I just kept it, but it appraised at two thirty. Woo! woo. <laughs> you know, I love it, man. That that is awesome. Um, super. Uh, that's a super good deal. Super super yeah. good deal. And I know you mentioned, you know, through your Carrot website. So if you, if you use Carrot, do you tweak some of the back end stuff? Like I, I know you're a digital marketer and you do you know PPC and everything else. Do you also kind of tweak your site to, you know, be custom and, and have all of those backlinks for SEO purposes as well? I do. You know what? My website looks like the shoemaker with holes in your shoe. It ranks really well, but it is not. I, it's literally carried outside out of the box. 
Like people can check it out. It's 412houses.com. It's like, it looks like it's literally out of the box, but all the content's unique. It ranks really well, which is a good point for people too. You don't have to have pretty websites. You have to have websites that say what you do and get the right traffic to them. So if you think about a seller, they're looking to sell. They want to come to your website. They don't want to, um, which I'll, I'll talk about mail and this, and for this exact example too, but they don't want to deal with fancy looking sites. They don't want to deal with bankers, like banks that, that look real corporate. Yeah. Uh, on the mailers, I sent a mailer. I used to do mailers back in the day. And we, I did yellow letters. They worked really well. And then me and my business partner, Chad, came up. We're like, hey, let's send some postcards that are really professional. We're going to match them to the city colors. They're going to look awesome. And they did. We sent 5,000 pieces and got zero phone calls. Oof. So ever since then, I, it made me think. It's like, okay, sellers want to deal with real people. They want to deal with individuals. Joe down the street Still. that buys houses, not not the bank down the street that's going to come in with guys in suits and like take advantage, you know? Mm. That's gold. And I want you guys, because I know folks and I know there's some coaches and some gurus that, you know, say, hey, you know, let me see what they'll talk to a seller and say, uh, let me see what I can get approved for you. Or let me go talk in the, in the back office and make you another triple, you know, type offer. And I still don't think that that's the way. I think being the local home buyer is still king. I still think that that's the best way to do deals. So, you know, be true who you are, especially when you're starting out, because then you're just being honest, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, so true, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just be honest with people and be real. It, every, all the sellers are dealing with something. So, and you got to be compassionate with them. That's like, funny. like if someone's going through freaking divorce and they got to sell their house. Like it's a situation, you know, you don't, you, you got to be compassionate there. Exactly. Love it. Well, look, man, I loved everything we ch- talked about, but I can't let you go without putting you through the lightning round. Are you ready for that? Let's do it. All right. Cool, man. So I have a series of rapid fire questions for you. You don't know the question. I don't know your answer. So just say the very first thing that comes to your mind. What's one book that's been instrumental to your growth? I'm going to say as a real estate investor, but in from the digital marketing space, uh, what's a good digital, digital marketing book? book maybe? Uh, I don't know any digital marketing books. Really. Richest Man in Babylon is my top book. Okay. I like that one, one specific page in there. Five Laws of Gold. That has made me millions of dollars. That just <laughs> following those roles, every decision I make now, I check it off those boxes and that allows me to walk away from the deals that I used to take that take all my money and take all my time. Love it. Look, I got the book. Haven't read the whole thing, but I'm going to look for that page, man. I- that is my number one book of all time. Definitely read it. Five Laws of Gold. Love it. If you could have drinks or coffee with any one person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh, man, that's a really good one. Uh, Michael Jackson, because he's awesome. Oh, he is. <laughs> I like that. That's, a, that's unique, and I love it. What's your best advice for someone looking to do their very first deal from digital marketing? Just do it. Get out there and do it. Don't get caught up in the head spaces. Go out and just jump into the pool and take the first step because that first step is going to turn into the additional steps. Good stuff. What's one mistake on a deal or in business in general that if you had a chance to do it over again, you would? Oh, man. Um, I lost about 50 grand in real estate my first round dealing with pre-foreclosure real estate, partnering up with people that had, uh, it, was, it broke the five laws of gold. I was trying to make an unrealistic gains and make a lot of money. And it was like shiny object kind of stuff and ended up losing everything. Love it. Good stuff. What's the financial goal that you have set for your digital marketing agency for this calendar year? We're on a trajectory to, uh, we're trying to hit like seven mil. Love it. Oh man, that's uh, that might be in the wrong business. If you woke up tomorrow with $500 million deposited into your account overnight, what's the first thing you would go out and purchase with that newfound money? I don't know if I necessarily purchase anything. I would take it and spend it on advertising with charities that I believe in. Good stuff. Good stuff. Last one. What would you tell the person that's looking to scale their business? And I want you to answer this from the mindset of what you've done to grow and scale your business. Yes. So scale in business, I would say, number one, do it. Get the right people. There's a book. I have it right there. Traction. Read that Mm -hmm. book. But the main focus would be spend more time pre-vetting employees to get the right people in the right seats because when you go too fast and you hire the wrong person, it takes three to four months to find that out and it just 
sucks. So try to find the best talent you can and then spend time and actually train them and don't just try to offload on them. Really good. Really good stuff. Man, this has been great. I really appreciate it. And, you know, from everything that we talked about, um, you know, all the tips and tricks with digital marketing, we dove into SEO, talked about Facebook leads, and also about how to make sure that you're converting these leads on the back end. You even gave us some great pointers about going out and doing some of the tweaks and changes to our marketing and our websites as well. Really, really good stuff. But how can people follow you, follow your journey or learn more about you and your company? Yeah, sure. We can go to motivatedleads.com and we have a Facebook group called Flip Club. You can apply in there also. Love it. Guys, make sure you go check that out. Definitely. I'm joining Flip Club too. So you might see me in there. And guys, while you're at it, head over to sendmoreoffers.com. I'd love to chat with you. Based off that website, there's nothing for sale. There's just a bunch of great content, show notes from the great guests that we've had over the years. And also you can connect with me if you have any deals in the Southeast at USA, uh, reach out to me there, sendmoreoffers.com. Brian, this has been great, man. I really appreciate you. We'll keep going out there and crushing it. And uh, we're going to have to chat about some leads here soon. Sounds like a plan, man. Good talking with you. Yes, you as well. Uh, guys, as always, send more offers, do more deals. Till next time, peace. That's all for this episode of the Send More Offers Real Estate Show with Brandon Barnes. But we know you're craving more knowledge to get yourself ready for that next deal. To schedule a call with Brandon to learn more about how to do deals consistently without seller appointments in a repeatable way, be sure to visit us at sendmoreoffers.com. And be sure to tune in for the next episode of the Send More Offers Real Estate Show.